Hey everyone, welcome to Dot Point S4, and today we're looking at the nitrogen cycle and the carbon cycle. So we previously looked at uh, the carbon cycle a little bit in S1 and 2, or the carbon in the soil, um, but this in this dot point we're going to look at it in a bit more detail. Um, and it's important that you remember the actual uh, cycle itself and um, the cycle of carbon as well. Um, it'd be a good idea to um, watch these videos. Uh, I haven't taken notes here, but um, you should watch these videos that explain um, the nitrogen cycle and also the carbon cycle further down here, um, this video here. And um, you should take your own notes um, to make sure you understand these cycles. So first of all, let's have a look at nitrogen. So nitrogen is the main nutrient that is needed by plants. Um, so of the macro or the large amount, large uh, nutrients, nutrients needed in large amounts, um, nitrogen is the l largest amount, and then phosphorus and potassium, which is NPK. Um, and so, basically, this is just off Wikipedia as an introductory thing about uh, nitrogen. But it says the nitrogen cycle is a biogeochemical cycle by which nitrogen is converted into various chemical forms as it circulates amongst the atmosphere, terrestrial, and marine ecosystems. Conversion of nitrogen can be carried out through both biological and physical processes. Important processes in the nitrogen cycle, and these are the important steps, include fixation, ammonification, nitrification, and denitrification. And the important point here is that um, there's obviously nitrogen in the soil, but the Earth's atmosphere, um, or the gas that we, the air that we breathe in, is actually 78% nitrogen. So there's an enormous amount of nitrogen in the atmosphere and in the soil, and obviously it needs to get cycled around um, between those two places, um, making it the largest source of nitrogen. So air is the largest source of nitrogen. However, atmospheric nitrogen has limited availability for biological use, leading, leading to a scarcity of usable nitrogen in many ecosystems. So um, nitrogen is the most important and needed, needed in the largest amount, but plants cannot access um, directly the nitrogen gas in the atmosphere. It has to be turned into nitrogen in the soil um, by a variety of processes, and those processes involve bacteria um, in the soil and in plant um, in nodules, which turn the nit nitrogen gas into a, a usable form by plants. So um, the nitrogen cycle is super important. Like I said, you should watch this video just as a brief um, overview and take your own notes here. Here's some important points about uh, the nitrogen cycle. So it's the most important nutrient for, for crop growth. Um, water and nitrogen are the two main things that plants need. Um, nitrogen exists in many forms, which we're about to see down here, and it passes around a cycle, which we're also about to see just here. Um, the various forms of nitrogen determine how available it is to plants. So depending on what form it's in here, some, some forms um, plants can't access it in, like nitrogen, and some forms plants can access it in, um, like ammonium and nitrate, uh, which plants can access it in quite easily. Um, the, pre the presence of usable nitrogen and its losses affect the sustainability of production. So um, whether plants will continue to grow in a location depends on there being a good amount or volume of nitrogen that the plant can actually use. Now, if it's in the form of nitrogen gas or um, nitrite, then the plants can't use it. But if it is converted into uh, ammonium or nitrate, then the plants can use it. Um, if it's mismanaged, it can obviously cause um, economic loss because if we don't have enough fertilizer, nutrient, nitrogen um, to grow plants, we won't be able to grow them because it's the main nutrient needed. And um, they can either, basically, plants themselves can actually absorb either ammonium or nitrate through the roots. And this is really important um, that these are the two forms of nitrogen that plants can access easily. The other forms they can't really access. So here's the forms that we'll see on the diagram in a second. Uh, we have nitrogen gas, which as I said is 78% of the air around us. Um, it's not available for plants directly, but plants that are known as legumes, um, such as lucerne, which have rhizobium bacteria in their nodules on um, the roots, um, they, the rhizobium bacteria can actually take in gas, nitrogen gas, and turn it into a usable form for the plant. Um, ammonia, which is NH, so you don't need to worry about the chemical um, formula, formulas here, just ammonia is the basic form of nitrogen fertilizers. In this form, um, the nitrogen is unavailable to plants. So we usually apply fertilizer as um, ammonia, 
or urea, which we'll look at in a second, ammonia or urea. And um, those forms need to then be converted into these other forms um, by bacteria in the soil to make them accessible by the plants. So we have nitrate and it's the most common form available to plants. In this form, nitrogen is mobile, um, so it can move around. It's leachable, it can move down through the soil um, and out of the roots, out of the reach of the roots of the plant, which is bad and usually um, is the end product of mineralization. Um, ammonium is a less common plant available nitrogen and once ammonia is applied to the soil and bacteria then change it into ammonium um, and plants can access ammonium but they cannot access ammonia um, and plants do like ammonium so they can take it up um, and it's it's actually better even though they can take up nitrates as well it's better if they take up ammonium because it uses less energy the plant to actually take it up and um, it's less likely to be lost out of this form. Ammonium is a bit more stable and stays in the soil for longer. Um, nitrate is actually the step between ammonium and nitrate. So nitrite, with an I, um, is an intermediate between ammonium and nitrate. And it's effectively not available to plants and if it, it can actually be toxic to plants. So um, yeah, it's, it's not accessible to plants is an important point. So here we have the... Um, cycle and this is really the point of this uh, dot point you need to remember this cycle so you can see here first of all that we have nitrogen up in the atmosphere we have nitrogen in various forms in the ground and we have plants which are also have nitrogen in them and require nitrogen to grow and you can see that at each step here that occurs um, there's bacteria basically that convert the nitrogen to the different forms at every step um, decomposes, um, including fungi in this case, um, break plants down when they die and the nitrogen goes back to ammonium. So we might also apply a fertilizer into the cycle. So basically this cycle is assuming that um, there's no human intervention and the plants just die, um, they get broken down, um, the nitrogen goes back into the gas in the atmosphere, the bacteria in the soil take it in the gas, turn it into um, Ammonia, ammonium um, that the plants can access. It gets transferred through the nitrites, nitrates, and then back into the atmosphere. However, obviously we can, as humans, affect that cycle by increasing um, the amount of nitrogen in a, in a system in agriculture. We can apply ammonia or we can apply urea. They're the two forms of fertilizer that we might apply, basically, for nitrogen, ammonia, or urea. And we're basically inserting it at this point here and um, it then gets turned by um, bacteria in the soil into ammonium. And remember, the plants can use this, as our, we said previously, the plants can use ammonium, and that's ammonification. Um, this process, this kind of three-step process here, ammonification, nitrites, nitrates, this is called nitrification, where it's changed through the different forms of um, nitrogen here. So ammonification, nitrites, nitrates is nitrification, and there'll be a question on that shortly. Remember the middle step here, nitrites, plants cannot use nitrites and they can be toxic to the plant. However, the next step, nitrates, plants can actually use that. And um, once they become nitrates, um, they, there's also soil bacteria. So you'll notice these bacteria so far have been nitrifying bacteria or nitrogen fixing. So this, this process here is called fixing, nitrogen fixing, nitrification, denitrification are basically the three steps in this process. So I'll say again, nitrogen fixing, putting it into the soil, nitrification, changing it in the soil, and then denitrifying, getting it out of the soil. So there's bacteria at every step. Um, but what happens here, once we've got to nitrates, um, some denitrifying bacteria in the soil um, turn the nitrogen back into gas and it's lost into the atmosphere. Now, as we said before, some of the nitrate, um, nitrogen in the, in the soil is leached down through the soil, so it's gone this way. Some of it goes back into the atmosphere. Um, as well. Now then it moves into the atmosphere um, and it can get fixed back into the soil. Now there's two types of fixing bacteria. So there's nitrogen fixing soil bacteria and these are ones that just live free living soil bacteria that just live on their own in the soil. And then we have nitrogen fixing bacteria um, that live in legume roots and these are things such as um, rhizobium which you already know about um, there. And then of course like I said when pl plants take up nitrogen, they assimilate it, and then they break down and they decompose. 
Um, so the process of nitrification here, as I said already, is ammonium to nitrite to nitrate. Um, and really you don't need to remember um, the chemical formulas as much as the names here. So that's the cycle. Um, you just need to be able to remember it in case you get asked a question on it. The carbon cycle. Okay, so this is in a similar way to nitrogen. It's completely separate, but um, the cycle involves um, carbon in the air, um, carbon in living things, and then carbon in the soil. And so it cycles around between that. And the problem is that at the moment, um, the problem with carbon, um, carbon emissions and carbon tax and global warming and all those kind of... Um, things that we talk about, um, there, at the moment there is too much carbon dioxide in the air or uh, more than there has been for a very long time. And so that's upsetting or changing um, climatic events in the world. So because um, every living thing is made of carbon, um, when, they, when every living thing breaks down, uh, we get fossil fuels and all the carbon stored in the soil or lots of it is stored in the soil and then we burn it. Um, the problem is we've been burning trees and um, fossil fuels which are all in the ground and we burn them and then we get carbon dioxide and so there's a lot more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than there really has been for a long time um, and that's the basic problem so every living thing has carbon and it either gets excreted as um, carbon dioxide from living things and humans um, plants and really the only way that it comes out of um, the main way that it comes out of the air and back into the soil is through plant growth because as you know from photosynthesis, um, plants take in carbon dioxide, they break down and then they, um, the carbon is sequestered or moved back into the soil. Um, if plants are burnt, so this is um, back to a few previous top point, dot points ago, if you have um, stubble from a wheat crop and you have it um, in a paddock and you burn it, instead of letting it decompose and the carbon going back into the ground, that carbon... Um, when you burn the plant and the stubble goes back into the atmosphere and so it's lost. So this is um, very much related to um, the S1, S2 dot points about carbon, soil carbon as well. So a little bit of a um, brief um, overview from Wikipedia here. So the carbon cycle is a biogeochemical cycle by which carbon is exchanged amongst the biosphere, petosphere, um, geosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere. And carbon is the main component of biological or living compounds. So every living thing is made up predominantly of carbon, as well as a major component of many minerals such as limestone. Um, along with the nitrogen cycle, water cycle, carbon cycle um, comprises a sequence of events that are key to make Earth capable of sustaining life. So we look shortly at the water cycle, but like we said, the nitrogen cycle is very important, so is the carbon cycle, and so is the water cycle, which all allow life to occur on Earth. Um, it describes the movement of carbon and how it's recycled and reused. Okay, so some carbon facts. Um, world soils are an important reservoir of um, carbon. There's probably most carbon in the world is in the soil. And as such, soil can either be a source or a sink. So we can either dig it up and burn it, um, such as fossil fuel, or we can um, put it back in um, from the atmosphere into the soil, depending on how we use the land and how we manage it, etc. And the conversion of native ecosystems, so when we previously had bush or scrubland or whatever, forests, grasslands, etc., to moving to have agricultural uses where we plough and um, where we, we um, land clear and remove trees, this has led to um, lots of carbon that was in the ground or held, held up in plants um, being released as carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And so burning fields, um, as I mentioned, stubble, um, and cultivation is pretty bad uh, in terms of um, ruining uh, and or putting more carbon into the atmosphere. And so there's really been a big reduction in soil organic carbon in agricultural fields over the last 100 years of burning crop residues. And as we said, um, in S1 and S2 dot point, carbon and organic matter um, are basically, um, you know, they are related uh, very closely. Um, Organic matter is predominantly carbon, and so it's really important if we to improve the organic matter in our um, paddocks, in our fields, then which is going to improve our productivity. We need more carbon in the soil. Um, so the carbon stock is reduced by burning, but also because we've had less diversity and monocropping. Um, so 
you should watch this video about the carbon cycle and take your own notes, but um, here's some practices that cause carbon gains to agriculture. So if you increase organic matter and allowing decomposition of plants, if you green manure and um, grow a plant crop and then plow it back in, if you have a diverse number of crops and you have more large trees, that's gonna cause um, carbon to be taken out of the atmosphere and put into the soil. Um, how, how agriculture loses carbon into the atmosphere, obviously burning stubble, um, repetitive monocultures with crops sold off the farm. So you can imagine um, when you're growing um, plants, they take carbon from the soil as they grow and also carbon from the atmosphere. And that um, carbon is then taken off the farm and basically eaten by people. Um, and so that carbon is lost off the farm and it needs to be replenished somehow. And the ways of doing that, like we said here, is um, these methods over here. Um, so animals also breathe out carbon dioxide and carbon is lost from the farm. Um, so out outline the um, cycling of carbon in agricultural ecosystem. Um, you can have a read of this, but it's basically just me um, writing into words what we saw here in the diagram. Um, but you can have a look at that if you want. And um, yeah, but it's just putting it into steps and just talking through the steps. It's really straightforward. All right, the only questions that have been asked on this in the HSC are um, on the nitrogen cycle. So it, it's possible that um, we might get a question soon enough on the carbon cycle. But um, this is a 2016 question and it shows uh, the nitrogen cycle. We've got uh, nitrates, ammonia, soil carbon, nitrogen gas, nitrites, etc. Um, so they could kind of organize this in any real way that you, um, yeah, they could put in any different kind of arrangement. Um, so you really need to know your cycle pretty well to be able to answer this. So which arrow in the diagram represents the process of nitrification? And remember, nitrification was the process of turning ammonia um, to ammonium, so nitrites to nitrates. So um, this kind of process here is nitrification. So um, nitrites, nitrates, um, why is the answer there? No, nothing else is um, correct. This is denitrification and um, this is absorption into the plant. Um, the diagram shows a summary of the nitrogen cycle. So uh, which process of the diagram does not involve microbial activity? Now, as you remember from the diagram before, um, basically all of the steps involve nitrogen. So, the, or sorry, involve um, bacteria. So the question of which ones, um, which step doesn't involve bacteria or microbes is actually a hard one. Um, and this question stumps a lot of people. It's a question 19, it's meant to be pretty hard. But the key is um, this one here, it says dissolved. And with um, any nutrients that are dissolved, that means water. Um, it means it's dissolved in water. So that doesn't require microbes to dissolve something. So this is the key. It's a little bit of a tricky question. Um, it's pretty obvious um, when you see it, but it's pretty tricky because every step of the nitrogen cycle really pretty much, other, obviously other than this one, requires uh, microbes. So the answer there is definitely W or A. Uh, which pair of nitrogen containing substances can plant roots extract from the soil? And I remember the ones that they can extract are ammonium and nitrate. And so there's all these different combinations here. It's not ammonia and nitrate. It's not ammonium and nitrite. It is ammonium and nitrate are the two ones that um, can be extracted by plants.